taking the time to come and visit me today. Lately, it's been very troubling, the things that are going on in our country and in the world. And if we're not careful, we will become very discouraged. We will get to the point when we say, why bother? But worse, we will think that the evildoers and those that um, do not have our best interest at heart will take control and they will win. And this morning, I just want to talk about that a little bit. Because even I have my times, like everybody else, where you think, what in the world is going on? Lord, where are you? For those of us who look to God for our answers, we are in a place that if we're looking at the news media and what's going on around us, the price is going up and um, interest rates going up and jobs, you know, downsizing. Places of business not being able to make it and are going out of business. We can think, oh, it is all collapsing, but it is not. We are told in the scripture that with many, many stories, if we read our Bibles and read the stories, as I've said before, they're there to, to help us and to encourage us. To encourage us in mainly that God is in charge and he sees things in case you think that he is not in case you think that the enemies of our countries and our souls and of this world is winning he is not there's a story of Ruth in the Bible and in, in the book of Ruth and um, one of the top officials there did not like Esther, who was the queen, did not like her race, or did not like her uncle, who was a very just man. And in the end, the gallows that um, he built for this man, his name was Haman, he got hung on those, that same gallows. So these stories, as many times as I read them or think about them, they show that we serve a just God. And when people are out to do evil, um, it, will not, it will not work. They will not succeed. And this is what we all need to really just keep reminding ourselves all the time. The God who made us, the God who created this wonderful world that we lived in, and this awesome body that each one of us have, when you think about how everything works together by the most uh, design that um, our scientists, they figure out how things work, but they can't make it work. And it's just not one thing. They're figuring out one thing at a time. You look at the smallest ant and you think that little ant, and there's millions of them, they know what they're supposed to do. They know how to find their food. They know how to build their colonies. And that just transforms itself up into the whole entire world. The seeds go into the ground. They root. They come up. And uh, the rain comes and, and the water, you know, is the thing that where the leaves, I understand, get their nutrients from the sun and water. Now, who made all of this? Not man. God did. And he cares for us. He showed his care for us by time after time after time. Putting down the enemy and, and allowing the good to flourish once again and this will happen this will happen right up to the end at the same time this same book our Bible 
tells us that there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And I, for one, want to be in that new heaven and new earth. I do not want to miss it. Because then it will be as it was in the beginning. Where things were designed and made beautiful for our benefit. And, I might add, for the benefit of the whole planet. Because our planet is very polluted and corrupt. And we... Each day, need to seek God's will of how we can retrain ourselves with the help and the power of the Holy Spirit to begin to walk and think and act in the ways of God. So that we're not joining this group that is trying to destroy everything that God has made for us for the good. So today I want to encourage you, but I also want to add one more thing. When you go, when you're in an army, and this is a war, this is a war between good and evil, from the ground level on up to the highest spiritual level, this is a war of good and evil. And we've seen the effects of the evil. The evil effects just keep growing more blatant and blatant in our face every day, and none of us can deny that. The most calm, live and let live, and a serene person can see the devastation and the desolation that um, seems to be right at our doorsteps. And though we need not be fearful, if we have joined the army for the good, many soldiers die. That's not a good topic that encourages people. But when we take up arms, we have to realize, are we in this for the, for the duration? Are we going to be the ones who throw up our little white surrender flag and decide that um, it's more than I thought it would be? Christians all over the world who are proclaiming that they believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ, they are being martyred. They are being imprisoned. So when we join this fight, are we willing to be a martyr? Are we willing to take up our cross every day? It's a sobering thing. But if we want good, our army has to swell. So I encourage you uh, that if you really want this evil to end, join the army of good. Call out to the God of heaven who made heaven and earth, who rules supreme, even though the evil think they do. I don't know why they think they're going to get by. Because they will all die just like men do. And women. And then they're going to face this God who made them. I want to be found on the side of good fighting evil. When I, One of my very first poems that I wrote when I came to Jesus and surrendered my life to the Lord and asked him to be my Savior. Come into my heart. Give me the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is what we give when we repent and are, are baptized, to teach me the ways of God, because the ways of God are eternal. They're forever. And if you don't like them here on earth, you wouldn't be very happy in the kingdom of God, in the heavenly kingdom. Because there, everything is done according to God's will. So, are you ready? Are you ready to join this army for good? And it is done by repenting 
And I have a friend that tells me that repent means change your way you think. But it's a little more than that. We do have to be sorry that we we were on the wrong side and that we are no better than any of these that we might be looking at and thinking, oh my goodness, how can you act like that? How can you do that? We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. The good news is that if we confess our sins, our intercessory at the right hand of the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, He makes intercession for us, and we will be cleansed of all, all the unrighteousness, all the bad that we've done, and we start a new day and a new clean slate. And to ask the Holy Spirit to come in and teach you the ways of our Heavenly Father, whom we all want to live with forever one day. And I say this with one more little word of caution. Count the cost. Jesus said to take up our cross daily and follow him. A Christian is a follower of Jesus, a disciple, one that learns of him. He said, learn of me, for I am weak, weak, meek, and lowly, and you will find rest for your soul. There is rest, and there is joy, and there's goodness that follows us. If we make this important decision, but know this, Jesus also said that if they hate you, it's because they hated me. So it isn't, we were not promised a rose garden, but we are promised eternal life because this one isn't just the only one we get. Something happens when we leave this world. Are we willing to stand up and say, I want to be in the kingdom of God when Jesus comes and makes all things new? I want to join that heavenly kingdom. I pray that that is your response today and that you do it with your eyes wide open. That yes, there may be martyrdom. Many people around the world know this. As I said before, they've been cast into prison. Count the cost. And I pray that you will make the right choice. Because it is an eternal choice. And I felt led with everything that's going on right now to speak on this topic. And I hope it is encouraging because it tells you there is hope. We serve a just God. We serve a just God. And the evildoers will have the consequences of their evil actions. So don't lose the faith. With that note, I will end and bid you shalom.